Rivalry Game Edition of Cougar Sports Saturday on KSL News Radio. I'm getting the tinglys. I'm getting the itchiness. I'm getting the sweaty palms. My wife makes hey, fun of you me. still got six hours left, buddy. <laughs> hold, uh, hold on that sweat. <laughs> this game is so magical. It's so tense and nerve wracking, but it is magical. It conjures up the best and the worst of your emotions, and I, I kind of love that. Yes. Even though, you know, I do agree with the the weird messaging from the universities about rivaling right. I didn't love that ad. Hey. <laughs> You might name your kid Lavelle Edwards. Uh, really? First and last name? We're going there? Okay. All right, Shane. I'll do that. <laughs> Maybe Ruben? Oh, but I, I do love it. it. It's just fun to enjoy your inner fandom, and I think that's something that BYU fans are going to really enjoy tonight is just – it's been, what, three years? It's been three yeah. long years since you've had this opportunity, and then, you know, we talked about bragging rights earlier and what this would mean for Utah to upset BYU. What about the the inverse? You thought you were coming into the league your first year here. We rolled you guys on our way to the Big 12 championship game. This is the type of game, Mitch. We will talk about this forever. The first ever yep. conference meeting in the Big 12 after being apart for over a decade. And I have a feeling the free ice cream and the free treats that have been handed out in that northwest end zone have given BYU some goodwill from the Big 12 people. They're pulling for probably BYU oh, tonight yeah. because Utah did not make themselves a, a big friend coming no. into the Big 12. <laughs> no. uh, and so the, the Big 12 fan bases, they're probably pulling for the guys in blue. And, and for good reason, because, I mean, BYU is – is undefeated. They control their destiny to get to the playoff. They're the best team in this league right now in the conference. And, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a great day. I mean, BYU and Utah means so much to so many, and I can't wait uh, to see this game played tonight. It's going to kick off at 8.15. We'll have extended pregame beginning at 6 o'clock right here on KSL News Radio. And right now, it's time for 3 and Out. Three and out. A quick hit look at BYU's next opponent on the gridiron. It's three and out on Cougar Sports Saturday. This is a deep dive segment we have for you where we get into the nitty gritty on stats, key players to watch, and we give you some bold predictions as well. Like any football drive, Mitch, you know where it starts. First down. That's right, Matt. And on first down, we give you a stat to watch. In tonight's game, I'll start things off. I'm going to go with 185. That's the amount of passing yards BYU has allowed per game this season. They're 24th nationally in passing yards allowed. And I bring that up because we heard from our Utes insider, Steve Bartle. Brandon Rose, if he does end up getting the start tonight at quarterback for the Utes, he's got a big arm. He likes to throw. Uh, he can run. He's capable runner. But uh, those deep shots... Uh, you know, BYU, it's a no-fly zone for the most part. Jacob Robinson, uh, Mark Collins, Evan Johnson, Tanner Wall, Crew Wakely. That, that secondary has been really good for BYU. And if Utah does try to throw the ball, uh, BYU has a chance to make this Utah team one-dimensional uh, because they've had a lot of success by defending the pass. BYU is ranked 21st in the nation in this key defensive category, which I think is of the utmost importance tonight, Mitch. And that is first downs allowed. They're third in the conference, top 25 in that category. However, the caveat there is they are 81st in the country in allowing third down conversions. If BYU can limit Utah's ability to sustain drives, get off the field, limit the number of first downs, I like BYU comfortably in this game. What gives me concern is long, sustained drive that shortens the game and eats the clock and puts more importance on every individual offensive drive for BYU. So, got to watch those first downs, got to limit those and get off the field. And if BYU's defense can do that, they'll be in great shape. Second down. Second down is where we give you some players to watch. And there are a lot of interesting players across the board. I'll give you... One for BYU's offensive defense and a Utah one. Offensively, I'm watching Bruce Mitchell. I think Bruce has done a fantastic job this season, but he has not faced a defensive yep. line like Utah. Now, if Bruce, who a lot of his peers on the offensive line say is one of the strongest players on the football team, if he can handle Junior Tafuna and others on the inside and open up running holes, then that is a decisive edge for BYU. And on the flip side... I want to watch a potential battle between Tyler Batty and Spencer Fano. 
Can like Batty that. get pressure on Rose? It is critical for BYU's defensive line to play up to the reputation they've earned this season. You could go with Micah Bernard. You could go with LG Martin, and those are fine matchups to watch. But Batty on Fano. Fano is ultra-talented. He's already getting NFL praise. This is the type of game for Batty where if you want to play in the league, you got to show it against one of the best tackles in the conference. If Batty can have one of his best games and prove to be a difference maker at pressuring the quarterback, that would be huge for BYU. I like that pick. I'm going to go with L.J. Martin, sophomore running back. There's been a theme, kind of an underrated theme in these road games for BYU where L.J.'s been healthy, SMU, UCF, first two or three plays, hand the ball off to L.J. to set the tone. I wouldn't be surprised if they show that tonight because LJ is critical. He is emerging as a star running back for BYU. Broke the 100-yard mark the past two games against Oklahoma State and UCF. Kalani said he's 100% this week. Got a little bit of a a bone bruise coming out of that UCF game where didn't give him the chance to close out the game. But I think LJ is going to be huge. But I, I think what's also maybe even zooming in deeper on that running back unit, the whole group's healthy. Aaron Roddick said that this week. Hinkley. Uh, Sione Imoa, who is a name that, what a stud, and we haven't had the chance to really see him right. since K-State. Uh, Enoch Nawahine is expected back. Miles Davis. So you got five guys. And we know in this rivalry, we've seen sometimes BYU have to dig into that depth at running back. 2018, they didn't have any more running backs. It was Matt Hadley, and he got, I think, a little bit nicked up in that game. You've got to have a strong stable of backs, and all of these unique kind of path that these running backs have taken to this point, helps them in a game like this where you've got to get tough yardage. L.J. Martin leads the way, but that whole running back unit's going to be an area to watch. Third down. Cut. Bold predictions, and I'm going extra bold. I don't know if it was uh, being emboldened by my win in the top five or the nice weather we've had during this outdoor show here at Roland Hall, which has been quite nice. We're seeing some fans roll up, getting ready for tailgate. I think... BYU is going to be turnover free in this rivalry game. That's how I'm feeling good about BYU, Mitch. Turnover free, they do that. I love their chances to win this game. You feel good even if that song starts playing? (laughs) 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 Yes. Even with that in the backdrop, turnover (laughs) free. (laughs) (laughs) I like that. That'd be that'd be bold because that's big in in this game. Uh, You know, for me, Matt, I'm going to go BYU runs. For 200 yards. Uh, and Whoa, I, I feel that's like bold. 200 yards. I'm on going bold. Team? I'm going bold. That's got blowout written all over it then. And that's at 200 yards. But, you know, I think this could be a little bit of 96. Maybe and I'm, 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 I'm taking a shot here. You know, it's it's got to be a bold prediction, so I want to give you that reaction. But 200-plus uh, yards, maybe just barely. You know, if they two, did those two things, what's the score? No turnovers and 200 gra- yards on the ground. I still think 10. it could be like, you know, 24 13 or something like it still could be something crazy because maybe maybe uh, what i'm with the messaging i'm saying is maybe the passing yards aren't as aren't as much in Fair. this game potentially but i do I think just here's the thing if you are breaking their will down in the ground game how much more life is left it's in this utah football team it, and look i just have a lot of belief in lg martin and i think he's got the right temperament for a game like this He's not faced by anything. He's just so quiet. He's so kind of meek and humble, and Kalani loves those type of guys. And I just don't think he's going to be phased by this environment. Like, he's just the same temperament no matter what the circumstances are, whether the Kalani's dancing in the locker room or it's a critical third down. Like, he's kind of the same mood. So I think you need that in these spots where you don't get too high, too low. I'm excited to see what LG Mark can do in this game. Let me riff off a few more interesting stats for you here. BYU is one of 12 teams in the conference that are ranked in both the top 25 in scoring offense and defense. That's a good number. Here's one that is kind of an under-the-radar thing, but I think it's an important one. BYU is 12th nationally, Mitch, just 4.5 penalties per game. Mm -hmm. They are way more disciplined than last year. Last year there were weird penalties uh, out of timeout issues. I feel like they've been a lot better in that regard. There's still been some weird timeouts, and maybe that's just a calling card of the Kalani Satake <laughs> era. But they have been much more disciplined. This is the type of game where you cannot have an unsportsmanlike penalty that erases a punt. You have to be buttoned up in every phase of the game. We were talking about this uh, a, a little bit ago. I think it was 
out of the break. That twenty that two thousand six game, we felt like BYU was a much better team. They got off to that fourteen zero start, and one of my memories of that game is like, how did it come down to this? A game winning touchdown drive. I thought they were better. Well, what happened in that game? There was a, a, a funky special teams play that swung the momentum. Don't let that be a penalty against Utah where someone loses their cool for a moment, it gets the crowd ignited, and it spurns some touchdown that they weren't going to have otherwise. Got to be clean in penalties. Third phase of the game has always been big for Utah for years, and that hasn't been as big of a storyline for them this season. BYU, on the other hand, really good at special teams. You think about all the impact plays BYU special teams has made. That's an area to watch, too, in this game. You know, just to keep tabs on, you know, play to kick. Punt the football if you're, if you're stalled. Don't, you know, don't have a muffed snap. Just keep it clean. Play to kick. And I think you're going to be okay in this yep. game. Absolutely. Producer Nate's got an update for us. This is uh, this is going to surprise you. Two updates from around the world of the Big 12. Kansas Jayhawks, 28-10 on Iowa State. Not a surprise, Matt. I called in my weekly Big 12 picks on kslsports.com. You have the Jayhawks. I picked the Jayhawks. Jeff Grimes culture is taking root. I'm huh? telling you, this Kansas team's playing hot. I mean, so again, next week, BYU. It, it's Look, tonight feels like an empty the tank game because you got to get it at all cost. But then you got another tough game and some more tough games. Like the Big 12, that's this Big 12, man. It's chaos filled. It's just it's crazy and some team that's got a 3 and 6 record or a 4 and 4 record tonight. You can you can be had. You can be taken down on a moment's notice. So you've got to be great the rest of the season. If BYU really wants to be perfect this year, they got to be on their A game every single week. The other shocker right now, Texas Tech, 13-0 over Colorado. Oh, my goodness. Now that's surprising. <laughs> wow. Boom, 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 boom. You called that, you were calling up, that one earlier. Okay. <laughs> Keep tabs on that. But crazy stuff. The chaos meter. Okay. Hey, hey, here's a thought. Chaos is happening now. Late night. Business as usual. Yeah, kind of exactly. The, all take, the all the weirdness. Uh, let chaos happen in the early. <laughs> hey, maybe there was a method of the madness. Hey, we're putting you in the late night spot to you know preserve your undisputed keep it, keep season. It normal. Keep it normal. Though. <laughs> all right, let's take a break. Uh, t- today's show is brought to you by UCCU. Elevate your banking with UCCU, serving both Cougar and Ute fans. UCCU, love where you bank. Final timeout. We'll get to our score predictions next. It's Cougar Sports Saturday here on KSL News Radio.